Do uh, girls watch news? Yes. What kind of news are you interested in? Uh, sure, sure, we can. So, what kind of uh, news uh, do you follow? Mostly all kinds. Just the ones that our dad watches, we tell you. Uh, do you watch international news as well? Yeah. So, recently there was there is something that happened in Texas. Are you aware of that? There was a barnyard fire, right? Yes, right. So, 18,000 uh, uh, animals no, were burned yeah, into yeah, it, yeah. right? Uh, do you know how many victims were there? I just saw one uh, headline which right. was there in the morning so it said around 18,000 cattle were affected yeah. and you know there was also uh, some human victims inside who oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't read that and uh, when the rescuers went do you know how many they tried to rescue? not really they only rescued the human oh my god yeah. okay. they let the animals burn what do you think about that? that is really bad really why bad. so? because we have our own uh, cow shed at home uh -huh. which and we like our grandparents and our parents look after the cows mm. and we have seen that there is so much better than the human things in our village All right. and so, we personally feel for those animals because at my house we treat them like our own children at uh -huh. any point human can survive them yeah, they, they can, could have rescued themselves. themselves I mean they could have but why do you think they were there at the first place maybe they were the people who were walking there no, so these animals were also there because they were milking the animals. So okay, right. It was after all a dairy farm, right? Right. Yeah. So do you think th if that was to happen in India, we would have the same outrage? It would have. <laughs> no, what do you both personally feel about it? It would cause a lot of outrage. I said, I talked to my sister too, I mean the day that happened and uh -huh. she was also as shocked as I am. Uh -huh. But I shared the same thing with my other friends okay. like, who are like not from the same background. Yeah. And they didn't think it was that big a deal like how me and my sister reacted. Yeah. I mean, uh, we often say that one death is a tragedy and a million deaths is just a strategy. Do you agree with that? I mean that was said by a dictator and I'm not judging you that you, you agree with the dictator. I also agree with that even though it's a very sad thing, it's right? It's a sad thing. But yes. when you think about it, why were these animals in that place? Even in India if that were to happen, that is because we are milking these animals, right? right? right. If we were to set them free, firstly we lock them, right. we tie them away, right? So if we were to keep them free, do you think that would have been better? They could have at least escaped? Yeah. They would have escaped but then in the place where you are milking the cows and it's a dairy farm, then it would be a little difficult for them to leave and not like keep them in a place where people can eat. I mean they are dairy farms yeah. right you are raising them to get milk so yeah. in that place at some boundary should be there I feel because right. how can the farmers milk the cows if they are like roaming freely around no, I mean I can ask you this one hypothetical question let's say a building is burning and you know people are inside yeah. and the gate is locked huh, okay yeah. so should you open the gate or should you not and you should definitely open the gate. Right. That time it doesn't matter whether they are your farm and you want to milk them or not. Your priority should be you should save them. Alright. Uh, but firstly they were tight. But uh, another point being, let's say the building is not burning. Is it still okay to lock the gate? When the people are inside? I would be a hypocrite if I say yes because my grandmom closes the gate on our couch. No, that's okay to be a hypocrite in the moment. Being <laughs> hypocrite in the moment, the reason I say, when we don't even acknowledge a problem, <laughs> That is when we won't even know there is a problem which right, exists. Right. Once we acknowledge that we are being hypocrite, we know that there is something wrong. Yes. And right. because we are humans who continuously evolve in our thoughts, in our actions, we can choose not to be hypocrite. Mm -hmm. We can put our words and actions in line, right? Right. So uh, when I ask you this question, should we lock someone? If the building is not burning, is it still okay to lock the building? This, this is a very... I mean, I don't... I'm conflicted in this matter. I mean, I can give you an example. So, her sister, she, uh, her sister teaches in school. Okay. Okay. The school is not on fire. But would it be okay for her sister to lock the classroom when the children are inside? Depends on the age of the. Yeah. No, for just lock them. No. For no apparent reason. Okay. Why not? Because at any moment, if someone is, if, if there is an emergency, that there should be an option to come out yeah. of that building. So, so if there is no emergency, is it still okay to lock? No, it's not. It's not. Because one should be free to yeah. move whenever they want, yeah. right? But can we approach another person and let's say touch them without consent? No, no. Your Why so? independence ends where someone else's independence begins, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't do that. All right. So when it comes to the cows, which were clearly in the dairy farms over your place, also they are in the dairy farms. Like you have a farm at your place, yeah. right? So do you think we are taking their consent to touch them? Okay. Are we taking their consent to milk them? See, at, 
like at our place at the end of the day the animal chooses to yeah. come to our place. chooses the okay. like we don't bring them they choose to come. they decide that to is come. fine but did they choose to give you milk yeah so if the cow is not okay then she does not allow the person to milk them yeah so she just seen that so we are victim blaming you <laughs> I mean, when you think about no, it, why no. does a buffalo or a cow? Which one do you have? Buffaloes. Cows, not buffaloes. All oh, right. Males or females? Females. Not males. Not males. How are they getting pregnant then? <laughs> and there are other ways you can do that in a village. So, so how are you getting it done? There are people who have like uh, male cows, bucks. They usually do it in the fields, and All then right. our cows come back. Up. So we have right. this season mating season in which. Like so once the baby is born, yeah. usually that happens in what nine to ten months, right? Ah, yeah. So what do you do with the baby? We keep our babies inside our house, uh-huh. not in the cow shed. Till All some right. point, then All we right. tie them with the mother. Sorry, we? Then we tie them in the cow shed with All their right. uh, mothers. Do you think that tying them is okay? It's not technically okay, but then, but that that is a okay. That's what this is. A so way. if they chose to be over there, why do we need to tie them? Because earlier we used to have like many cows and we used to have many kids. Uh, so it was like the mother they used to drink milk from random cows. Mothers uh, used to drink. I mean, no, no, the, the cows. Kids. Okay. So cows. not from their own. Like at the same time, two three cows in our house used to give water to the cows. Okay. But then the cows used to get confused between who is their mother yeah. and they used to just go and drink random. Alright, so you are tying them so they are able to understand who is the mother, who is the. No, I. I think we are tying them so they don't drink the milk whenever they want to. Then because we get the milk of them. Yes, right. That that's one other one. So reason. the truth is that we tie them so that they don't drink their mother's milk. Yes, yeah, yes. But who deserves that milk? <laughs> they. <laughs> we have argued this at our home so many times. Our grandparents and our no, parents would not listen. Now grandparents are not going to listen to me yes. as well. But I'm talking to just you both. We so, agree with you. Yeah. That's true. They, it's their right to drink the milk. Just some of it or 100 percent of it. 100% of 100%. So do we have mother. any claim to that milk? We don't. <laughs> they are not our mothers biologically speaking, yeah. right? So we do not have the claim on their yes, milk. We don't. So at your place, if you tie them away, what is the baby having there if not the mother's milk? Ah, they drink. They, they give them. They give them for like but, first five minutes. Okay. Then we milk them. All right. So now uh, a cow is going to produce how much? Roughly seven liters of milk. Ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. right. two liters maximum. So day. okay, you might have the. Very desi, yeah, yeah. so they won't produce much amount yeah, of milk. Yes. So only two liters of milk. Yeah. Now, how much do you think the baby requires every single day? Yeah, half liter maybe. How do you know it's just half? I don't know. She used to give her that much. I have seen. Yeah. So here's the thing: no mother produces more milk than the baby requires. Yeah. Okay, that has never happened until there's a hormonal imbalance. That is also very rare thing. Which means if we are only letting them have 500 ml instead of the two liters or no matter how much the mother is producing, the baby is not getting their fair share, right? So they are going to be hungry in that moment, yeah. right? So even though we say that we look after the animals, when we actually try to understand the relation between a mother and the baby, we are not fulfilling that relation. Yeah. We are coming in between of that, yeah. right? Yeah. We are taking in charge of their bodies, yeah. right? Do you think it's okay to objectify or take in charge of someone's body? So what should be the solution for this to let this practice continue or individually, no matter if others understand or not, individually we should stop that. You stop but then again we are completely dependent on you. Ah. Like, so Sir, you are completely like, dependent on you. How do you replace milk? What do you replace milk with? I can easily answer that question but that depends why do you consume milk? For your enjoyment? No, calcium. 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 Any other reason? Not that you can think of, right? So, calcium. Now, genuine question, where do these cows get their calcium from? Grass. Grass? Uh, do you feed them grass? We feed them two, three things. One is that uh, peanut ka remains which, they, which are there after they remove the yeah. oil. Then coconut remains there. Yeah. Uh, and Hurst. hay. Yeah. yeah. Hay and normal hay grass. And sometimes the uh, leftover the sugar cane once the juice is taken out. Yeah. Huh. All of that. Yeah. Sometimes we feed them bananas and other things huh, as well. Yeah. Now the thing is calcium is a mineral, right? Yeah. Which means it does not come in our body. It comes from the ground, yeah. right? So many of the plants also absorb it. All of the green leafy vegetables or even the soft that we eat, you can go for almonds if you want, walnuts if you want, black seeds if you want, even chole. 
you consume chole right yeah let's say when you go for any of these plants you can get enough amount of calcium you know about dill right yeah yeah, yeah. so dill okay. is one of the best sources of calcium okay. even the millet milk that you consume will have more amount of calcium as compared to cow's milk very aware of any of that no so did we need to steal it from another baby then <laughs> <laughs> i think so calcium is to leave drinking milk i have a excuse now <laughs> yeah. and it is not just the milk but also the milk products ha uh, ghee no. butter cheese dahi paneer chaat and cream is also coming from milk only i mean you might be enjoying the cheese but i'm pretty sure the baby needs it more than we do right and it was never ours to take it was for another baby and why do mothers produce milk ha uh, it's for the babies right but why because in that initial phase the only nutrient that you can get is from the mother's milk and another thing is can babies digest anything else uh, right. they cannot do they have teeth to chew so either they are going hungry or we are feeding them something else both of them don't you think is cruel yeah. cows do have teeth uh. when they are young they don't they, yeah they right? can't chew. it's barely anything yeah, right they can't chew. Now, if they could chew anything, why would mothers need to produce milk, right? Yeah. Think from that perspective. And think about it. What do you think? If someone was to offer you human milk, would you drink it? Ah, uh, human milk. I don't think so. Right. How about donkey milk? Cat milk? No. But for cows and buffaloes and goats and sheep, we have a completely different attitude. Don't you think that's a uh, based in some weird twisted logic? Ah, uh, it is. So the reason we go for cows and buffaloes and goats and sheep is because they are very easy to tame. They are not going to fight back. So what we are doing is we are empowering them, like putting our pressure on them, and we are stealing from them, right? You do it to a horse, the horse is going to kick you. Yeah. Right. They are not going to let you milk them, and that is why we are not going for that. So don't you think because we hold the power, we are abusing someone else? In a way, yes. So do you think that is true for any sort of animal use? That we are controlling them, we are taking in charge of their life. Uh, but then the thing is, if these cows were out in the wild, we don't really know whether they would survive or not, right? Well, that's a funny question that you ask because genuinely say these cows has existed even before humans existed. Ha! Huh, but they right? are tame animals for a reason, I think. So what we did is we tamed them and we domesticated them. Huh. There's a difference between tame and domestication. Yeah. Domestication is think of any animal that lives in your home would be domesticated animal. Any animal that you have control, for example, elephants, right? Those are tamed ones which do not stay at your place. Okay. So that was from an act of greed. And I do understand we individuals are sometimes greedy, but does that mean we'll be so blinded by greed that we are going to do so many things which is not fair for the animals? And when you ask about do these animals have the power to exist in the wild? I mean, these animals, particularly the ones which we have right now, might not even be able to exist. So for that, what we do is we'll put them in sanctuaries where we can look after them without expecting anything in return. Not to abuse them, not to exploit them, not to think of them as milk making or beef making machines. But when it comes to it, there are wild buffaloes which exist in the nature, right? There are so many animals which exist in the nature in the wild. and what they do is yes there are other animals which want to eat them but they also run away from that right and that is how the balance of the ecology works so should we take control of them when our only objective to take control of them is for our benefits but when we go for these animals we only grow them or keep them for the purpose of extracting anything from them do you think that's fair and if we are doing that to a human raising them for a sole purpose of extracting physical labor from them what would it cost would it be a very humane thing to do would it be a compassionate thing so yes when we look after these animals we are fulfilling their requirements of food but what about their emotions and their social well being we forget all of those things but if you have to look at what are the things that an individual requires yes they require food shelter but also love also care and you know to feel safe to have their mother's love mother's milk is right of her birth right aren't we violating all that yeah yeah so what do you think is a solution for this on an individual level okay. no sir tomorrow this is a bigger problem it is i don't deny that what can we do on an individual level i mean why are these animals in this place ah oh, 
so I be, like what I've seen, many of our relatives who have cow shed, they treat their cows like they are not her, they are not their family member. Which my family personally have told them, we have talked to them that this is not okay. But they are not, they, people like, don't change mostly. But no, I'm not, talking about you, but I mean when you have a chance, are you going to keep a cow at your place or are you going to be busy with your uh, uh, work? I personally wouldn't because I know that I can't take care of them like I, how she would. Because she is totally an animals kind of person. I know that I can take care, I, I can't take care. I can look after them but I can't take care. So I would not keep a cow at my house. No, but uh, what I'm asking is not about keeping the animal at your place or not. That was never the problem. The problem was thinking of them as objects or resources. Uh, so do you think we need to change that mentality? Yes, yeah. On an individual individual yeah. level, we can change that. We can. I mean, when she thinks of keeping a cow, she does not think that it's going to be a milk machine yeah. or something. Right. I mean, she plans that the cow will live in the bedroom with her and she will be like her own pet, like like a cat or something. That's her dream. That is very adorable, but. I am glad that you say that you are not going to look at them as yes, milk making machines. But does that mean that when we go outside, let's say when you go into this restaurant, I have nothing against this restaurant, but I am just taking that example, okay? So when you order cheeseburger, are we thinking of where are we getting this cheese from? We are not, honestly, right? Yeah, we don't. But don't you think that we should? Of course we should. Because we are violating a bond between a mother and a child, right? So don't you think, firstly, we need to change the relation that we have with animals, that we need to give them the individualness that they deserve, and after that, we also need to acknowledge that what we are consuming as consumers is by stealing and overpowering someone. And once we change that mentality, when we understand that it was wrong, that is when the change is going to come. Yeah. So tell me, the next time when you think about this, or you get consuming... I have ruined cheeseburger for me. I will always <laughs> think where the cheese is coming from. <laughs> I am glad that I just now eat ice cream and I am like, oh shit. <laughs> we are going to not our dairy stuff from now. <laughs> I mean, I can give you one good news is you can get the milk like products ah, from yes. plants as well, right? Yes. They can make cheese out of coconuts and peanuts yeah. and cashews as we well. We do follow vegan community a lot, but we do not have the willpower till now mm -hmm. to go vegan. But we, we are thinking, yeah, we will definitely try. We can't say that we will completely follow it, yes. but we can always we can try. try. We can take baby steps and try after this conversation. So what I give an example, you see the stairs over there, right? Yeah. So we are at the very bottom where many of the animals are being exploited and we do not give them the rights they deserve. That is to live a life without cruelty or exploitation or someone taking control of them, right? So yes, we need to make sure that we go to the upper steps where no animals are being exploited. Okay. But the point is if we directly try to jump, we might only reach halfway or we might fall. What we need to do is understand the gravity of the situation and make incremental progresses to think about it wisely but make sure that we reach to the topmost point where no animals are being exploited. Because we, if we stop the midway, yes, we reduce the number of suffering, right? But we do not eliminate. It. When you mentioned that you want, or we are thinking about, and why so? Why did you think it's, of that? It's the same thing. I, I was like, I, I know that I'm against dairy products and consuming animal products, but I do not have the willpower till now. I did try it for some time, but then it was a bit difficult because I have like the background. I mean, everyone around me is eating. That was one of the things. But I will surely try to. That is an amazing thing. So, as we all would know, as you have experienced, being around the community with supports, you will really help. Yes. Yeah. So, what we have, like, if you see people over here, or the two people standing over there, and many people over there as well, we all are vegans. Okay, nice. Okay. We not just are vegans, but we also are against all forms of oppression, and we actively speak about it. Okay. Right? So, if you want, we can also add you to a transitioning group and vegan yeah, group sure. so that it becomes easier for you to, when you have a community and when you can talk to them, it becomes easier. But yes. at the end, we need to understand the fundamental problem was taking in charge of someone else mm. against their will. If we tackle that mindset, everything else falls apart easily. Right. And we can just have a straight path to stopping the abuse that is happening. So Richa can give them the cards. Yes. What I have done is I have compiled a bunch of resources on this side. Okay. There are some documentaries, there are some links to resources. Should you want to find alternatives, you'll find on those links. Okay. And you will find the information of our community on WhatsApp and Instagram. You can always message yeah. us over there if you Definitely. have any questions.